Hello, my name is Trey Alexander, and today I'll be talking about psychology, or I'll be giving a presentation on psychology. And more specifically, I'm going to be talking about five key things. First, I'm going to be talking about Abraham Maslow's concept of, of hierarchy of needs. Second, I'm going to be talking about uh, self-actualization. Three, I'm going to be talking about peak experiences. Fourth, I'm going to be talking about Mihai Chinksit Mihai's concept of flow. And fifth of all, I'm going to be talking about how happiness corresponds to all these things tied together. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, Abraham Maslow's concept of hierarchy of needs. Now, the hierarchy of needs by Abraham Maslow is basically his way of describing the human life in general aspects. Uh, a bunch of other psychologists believe that pe what drives people and what causes people to do things is all based upon rewards and like consequences for their actions. Uh, Abraham Maslow didn't believe this. Abraham Maslow basically believed that there was five key, five key building blocks that people build their lives upon. They have something out there that they're striving for and that they are trying to get. They have the most basic levels and then they have uh, more and more needs and levels that make you become a better person and help you have a better life experience. Um, he does say that there is five basic levels. Um, they're broken up into two different parts. There's basic levels and then there's growth levels. Um, basically, the bottom level is psychology or psychological level. Um, and then we have uh, safety and then we have social, then we have esteem and self-actualization. Um, basically, in order to reach the level of social happiness or in order to fulfill yourself socially before you do that you have to fulfill yourself psychologically and uh, you have to have safety um, for instance you can't worry uh, or you should not worry about having a relationship with someone else um, until you uh, have safety for instance like a house or let's say homeless people probably aren't worrying about like what their next love will be or what their next relationship will be when their most immediate need is food and water and shelter. Um, and so that's basically, he thought of that and he basically built his whole concept of life around that fact that in order to fulfill something, in order to go to the next level, you have to fulfill basic needs first. Um, and so once you hit the basic needs, then you can go on to growth needs. As soon as you have everything that you absolutely need in life, then you can go on to further levels, which brings me to self-actualization, my second point. Now, self-actualization is the highest part in his hierarchy of needs. Um, it's the ultimate experience that you want to have. Um, it Self-actualization is basically reaching a state where you are allowing yourself to grow. You you realize your potential, and you see that, and you're acting upon it. Um, it's not reaching um, a financial standpoint, so to speak. It's basic. It's different for each person. It's basically reaching somewhere and realizing that you have everything else taken care of, and from now on, you can focus on your potential as a human being. Uh, for some people, reaching self-actualization might be becoming a better mother. Uh, for others, that might be becoming the President of the United States, realizing something that they want to do and trying to fulfill that goal. Um, which will bring me to my third point, uh, which is peak experiences. Now, Abraham Maslow believed that you can measure self-actualization by the peak experiences that you have. Now, what is a peak experience? Um, according to Saul McLeod, which is a uh, he's a tutor at the University of Manchester, basically he says that peak experiences are tremendous moments of pure joy and elevation. Basically, stating that it's a moment in time where you have no worries, you don't have to think about anything else as a burden. What is happening to you is all pure awe and wonder and excitement and it's all happiness. It's pure happiness. There's not one thought inside of your brain about something that could go wrong, about worrying about something. It's after all of that, 
is just over with. What you are doing in that time is just is completely and utterly joyful. And that's what a peak experience is, is basically fulfilling everything else in your life to where you have time to fully enjoy or fully immerse yourself into something. Um, a study what, um, from uh, Saul, Mc no, I'm sorry, from Kendra Sherry, uh, a psychology expert um, on psychology or about psychology.com, basically uh, had a study that said out of all the people that she surveyed, it was recorded that only 2% of the people have actually had a peak experience in their life. And so this isn't something that's incredibly common to where you have no thoughts of worry or no bad experiences in your head to where it's just pure and utter joy. Um, and so when you have a bunch of peak experiences, Maslow believes that you have reached self-actualization. -actual um, but however, he does mention that just because you've reached you have reached self-actualization, it does uh, not mean that you will have peak experiences nor do you have to be in the self-actualization tier on the hierarchy of needs in order to receive a peak experience. People can sometimes have peak experiences uh, even if they do not re reach self-actualization. Now, my next point for uh, Mihai Csikszentmihalyi Mihai has a concept called flow and a bunch of people are compare and contrast a, a Maslow's hierarchy of needs versus Csikszentmihalyi's flow. And they do have arguably a lot of things in similar. They both uh, have a concept of happiness and both have a concept of not necessarily worrying about things, but they're kind of two completely different things. Uh, the main difference is that flow is a state of mind. When you have a peak experience, you are taking everything in basically the best way to describe it in layman's terms is basically when you're just in an experience and it just hits you. The awe of everything that you're doing right now, it just hits you. You're there, you're experiencing it. It's joyful, it's tremendous. That's what a peak experience is. Um, in layman's terms, uh, Chink Sent Me High's flow is basically being in the zone. It's basically being completely and utterly focused on something. The best way to describe flow is the word focus. You're not worrying about other things per se, but it's a state of mind. It's what you're doing. Uh, flow can happen almost anywhere, really. If, if you, flow means you are drowning out everything else, you're purely focusing in on what you're doing. Um, that can lead to in, uh, tremendous levels of productivity or tremendous levels of happiness. It just depends. Flow can happen um, during a peak experience, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that f uh, being or that having flow and being in a peak experience go hand in hand. You can be completely and utterly focused and have flow while being in a peak experience, but just because you're having a peak experience does not mean you're in the zone and focusing on something. Uh, you can have flow when you're reading a book, you can have flow when you're working, if you just drown everything out and you're just a beast at doing what you do, that is flow. Um, that's not peak experiences. Just because you don't feel the burden of other things around you uh, does not mean you're in flow uh, or does not mean you are having a peak experience. So flow can happen um, when you're playing a game, if you're just completely focused on it, um, like think of athletes or something like that, or it can happen at work when you're being productive, um, or it can happen when you're reading a book, just sitting there and then just completely focused on that book. That is Csikszentmihalyi's concept of flow and basically what he's trying to accomplish. Now, finally, how does happiness relate to all of this? Well, happiness relates to all this is basically stating that what both of them have in common is in order to be in these states of mind, that is what makes you the happiest you can be. Having a peak experience is not worrying. Focusing is not worrying about anything whatsoever. So as soon as you get to self-actualization on the hierarchy of needs and you have a peak experience, you can be completely and utterly happy and unlike anything else you've ever experienced in the world. Um, and that's what every person should be striving for. Thank you.